What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here with Dilly Vanilli. We are here to discuss one of the most interesting, hated, <laughs> hated. <laughs> intriguing teams of the 2019 NFL season. That is the New York Giants. And I don't know if they're interesting or intriguing for the right reasons, but possibly the wrong reasons. And just by that intro, you may know where this is going. But the New York Giants, I kind of feel bad because as a Patriots fan, I know that there's going to be comments like, oh, you just hate the Giants because they beat you in the Super Bowl. I don't care. I've seen my team win six Super Bowls. It's not that you guys beat us in the Super Bowl, okay? I just don't think you guys are that good this season. I honestly don't hate your team. I just want to put that out there, and I know Dylan's going to get the same because he's wearing the Cowboys shirt. I just want to place that before we even get into the conversation. Thank Dylan, you. I just don't – I look at this team. I look at this roster. I look at the way it's been constructed, and I just don't believe in the New York Giants. And it's not just because I feel like Eli is complete garbage at this point, but I feel like the rest of the team – and I'll get into the defense specifically. I don't like it within a division – that has the Eagles and the Cowboys who are two of the most talented teams in the entire NFL. This, this team is bad, like really, really bad. I want everybody also to preface that when we were doing these in 2017, we had them in the NFC Championship game, uh, and then they went 5-11. and 11. So don't try to – no, they went 3-13, and 13, one of those two. But don't try to come at us just because of that. Anyways, this team is really poorly put together. Um, Dave Gettleman has been spewing the same crap about how he's trying to construct this new team for the future, uh, and then he takes eight steps back in his process. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, we went into great detail about their draft, um, and it's not really typically going to be seen here because there's only one guy uh, from the first round, Dexter Lawrence, that's going to be starting immediately. But uh, let's look at this team. Who do they have at receiver? <laughs> Because this has been the biggest thing for the last couple of days is they have nobody healthy. Um, would have been avoided if you didn't trade OBJ, but that's just kind of my opinion. Um, you got Golden Tate who's being suspended for four games. He says he's you know innocent. Um, it is what it is. If he's innocent, that's fine. But let's also take into a fact that your OBJ is gone and you're replacing him with Golden Tate, who is a okay good receiver a good receiver but not, not what he used to be either this is yeah. not golden tate from 2016 this is golden tate from 2019 mm -hmm. who right. at his best is a top five slot receiver in the nfl mm -hmm. now he's like a top 15 slot receiver in the nfl so that's not very good right and he just moved on from pretty much you know he was at the eagles and then they're like yeah we, we can move on now he's with yeah. the giants so he's not as good as he want, uh, once was um, Sterling Shepard, he broke his thumb. He's going to be out for a little bit. He might not even be there at the season opener. And uh, Corey, Corey Coleman tore his ACL. So you're left with guys like Cody Lattimore, Russell Shepard, Alonzo Russell, Darius Slayton. Like these guys are not good. You know what I mean? They're, they're not talented. Or even if you think that they're okay receivers, they're not going to be outstanding. There is no nothing out, you know, noteworthy about any of these guys right now. Cody Lattimore is a starting slot receiver, so okay, you know what I mean. Like it's really bad, um, even before those injuries. And now you got to deal with maybe all three of those guys not being there week one. So, um, offensive line, maybe I don't know. Nate Solder got paid a lot of money, and he disappointed last year. Uh, let's we'll see what he does in 2019, but he did not do well. I will say, I think it is better than last year. Just because yeah. they added Kevin Zeitler. Kevin Zeitler. Yeah, Kevin Zeitler was a huge addition to this team because otherwise this would be, you know, crumbling at the at the swords. Evan Ingram is going to get 100 receptions at this point. Like, honestly, if you're looking at fantasy, you might want to look at him. But even then, he's only going to get five-yard receptions. He's not going to get anything deep. He's just going to PPR. Get him in PPR if you need a tight end. What, do I, what have we not said about Eli Manning that needs to be said? Like, we have said so many things about this guy, how he needs to retire. He should have retired three seasons ago. He continues to dip in quality. And let's say he has a bad season and they put in Daniel Jones mid-year. He's not going to be any better. I just saw him in practice overthrow a tight end. Like, and there people are talking about he threw the pass away. It's in training camp. It's in practice. Come on now. It's absolutely ridiculous. This quarterback duo is garbage. Saquon Barkley. He is your number one draft pick because he's going to get 500 touches on this team this year. There is no other person. He might break the touch record of all time. I think he will. <laughs> I 
Honestly, I think he will because they have no other reliable, maybe Evan Ingram, but they have no other reliable targets to go to, and he's going to be running to the ground, which for his future is a terrible plan. Um, it, that He is the, by far their best player, by far their best player, but I worry about his future if they're going to give him so many touches. He, I think he will break that all-time record. This defense is – Wow, because honestly, remember a few years ago we had Janoris Jenkins, we had Olivier Vernon. This team was looking like it had a defense for the future, and now we're moving into a new era, and it's not a very good era for me. I know you're going to touch on it a lot more, and I'll let you do so, but um, like we, they go and trade for Jabril Peppers. Okay, great. Um, Grant Haley is like one of your starting defensive backs. Sam Beal uh, at, lot, at corner. We got, you know, Alec Ogletree is probably my favorite on this list. Dalvin Tomlinson is okay. But this team is just not looking not looking great. Like, it doesn't look like it has that star premier player anymore. It doesn't look like it has that person that you can go for, forward with this team. It just looks like middle-of-the-road average guys. And you might want to hate on me, but whatever. Um, so, overall, this team is crafted for one guy and one guy only. And the rest of them are either mediocre starters to what the hell are we doing with this team. Dave Gettleman may say that he has a plan, but he does not have a plan. This team, in my opinion, is going to have the worst record in the National Football League, 2-14. and 14. That is the only team I have given a 2-14 and 14 record this season, which is surprising because I have the Dolphins later on. So, yeah, 2-14, and 14, worst record in football. Wow, they're worse than the Dolphins. Yep. So, the New York Giants, I'm not going to criticize the pick of Daniel Jones Yet, like I've obviously said what I believe, and that is that I don't think Daniel Jones is worthy of that selection. But until I see him play, I am not going to say he's awful and I'm not going to give up hope. Okay, so Daniel Jones, totally different discussion. He could be great, and that would be a fantastic pick. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, their wide receiver group, Dylan went over it. They're all slot receivers with no legitimate threat of going down the field. This entire passing game is going to be within 5 to 10 yards, and that is going to be so easy to defend. And not only does it make the receiving game and the passing game easy to defend, but it helps you defend Saquon, who is the hardest running back in the NFL to defend on a consistent basis. It just makes it way easier because, hey, let's just load the box because they don't have Odell or any receiver with any downfield speed or threat of going deep at all. They don't have a quarterback who can throw the ball down the field. So we're just going to put our safeties in the box. We're going to have our corners press. We're going to have our whole line get up in the face of Saquon Barkley and Saquon is great. So he's going to make things happen regardless. He's like the Barry Sanders right now of this generation, in my opinion, where it doesn't matter who he has around him. He'll just make guys miss like no matter what, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. So, and I like Will Hernandez. I think he played well as a rookie. And if, you know, Quentin Nelson was not a rookie last year, we would have been talking about how great he was last season. Cause I do feel like he was good last season. So I like his promise at the guard position. Nate Solder, I still believe in. I still believe he can get it done. He had rough stretches last year, but he also had good moments. So we'll see going into 2019 if he can improve his play second year on the team. Kevin Zeitler is a beast. He's the best pass blocking guard in the league, according to PFF from last season. So that should help. And you have less excuses for Eli Manning when it comes to pass protection. Mike Rimmers is awful. I'm not going to debate that. That was not a very good signing. Tight end Evan Ingram, very talented player. But again, he's probably their most explosive receiver, which is kind yeah. of sad because he's a tight end. So that's not great. But he's going to be their downfield weapon, in my opinion. But he'll probably see a lot of catches or a lot of targets because, you know, the crossing routes over the middle just for a couple yards. That's what Eli's going to throw. The defense, I said I was going to touch on it. This defense, to me, is the least talented in the entire NFL. What this is is a bunch of rookies mixed in with a bunch of scrap heap guys that you signed to one-year contracts. Like, Marcus Golden was good like at one point in his career for one season for the Cardinals, he's gotten injured like two or three years in a row. You sign him to a one year cheap contract and immediately he's a starter. I don't know about that. Alec Ogletree has been one of the most overrated players in the league. 
and you're trying to find a way to get rid of his contract. Lorenzo Carter, I liked coming out of the draft last year, but very young player. Unproven. Dalvin Tomlinson's okay. Dexter Lawrence is a rookie. BJ Hall is maybe okay, probably below average. Like just looking at this, Sam Beal is a scrap heap guy. Like BJ Goodson's a scrap heap guy. Jabril Peppers, everyone's going to say in the comments, he's amazing. He is only good when he's put in specific situations. You have to play him in a specific role. You cannot utilize him outside of that. There's a reason why Cleveland wanted to trade him. That is all I'll say. Antoine Bethea is a scrappy guy at this point. He's old. I'm surprised he even has a job. Janoris Jenkins, is he still a top 20 corner? Probably not. He's probably a top 25, top 30 corner. And he used to be like a t arguably a top 10 corner. I like DeAndre Baker to a certain extent. I like Julian Love to a certain extent. But these guys are rookies. These guys are extremely young. They have not proven anything. And your special teams does not help much either. So the Giants are one of the worst teams in football. There is no doubt about it. And to me, they have the worst quarterback play in football. I am going to say that they are 3-13, and the worst team in the NFC this year. I'm not sure if they're the first overall pick in the NFL, but they're definitely in the conversation. Yeah, pretty pretty much. There's not a whole lot of positives you can say about this team. And it's strictly like if you look at the roster, you look at what their record or their schedule, there's not much to it. All right, guys. Well, you probably didn't enjoy this if you're a Giants fan, but Gronk spiked the like button regardless. Subscribe to the Bottom Line View for more honest NFL analysis and comment below your opinion. Do you agree with us? Tell us why we should be a little bit higher on the Giants in the comment section below. It's Mitch and Dylan. Thanks for watching. Peace out.